Hello fellow artists, this is Linda Riddle and it's a good time for art. Today we'll be making freestanding sculptures. In our last class we made relief sculptures, like this one. Relief sculptures are three-dimensional. They have height, they have width, and they have depth, but they're flat on one side. So if you were to walk around the back of a relief sculpture, you wouldn't find anything very interesting. Freestanding sculpture, on the other hand, has something going on on every single side. So you'll see something different depending on where you're standing. Another name for freestanding sculpture is sculpture in the round. We'll be using recycled materials to make our freestanding sculptures today. So your first job is to go on a scavenger hunt. This is just a small part of my collection of recycled treasures. Look for objects that are three-dimensional with different colors and textures. Don't be afraid to think big. If you have an outdoor space and big cardboard boxes, you can make a sculpture that is bigger than you are. You may have noticed that we've been doing a lot of recycled art lately. Most of us are stuck inside and can't go shopping for art supplies. But many artists used recycled objects in their sculptures by choice. For most of history, sculpture consisted of carving figures from stone, wood, and other materials. Sometimes sculpture was cast in metal, like bronze, or molded with clay. A little over a hundred years ago, some artists began to explore a new approach. The French artist, Marcel Duchamp, was among the first to use recycled materials as sculptures. Duchamp was part of an art movement called Dada, which questioned the idea of what art should be and how it should be made. He introduced the idea of using everyday items in sculptures he called ready-mades. The ready-mades are ordinary manufactured objects that the artist selected and modified, like this bicycle wheel. The Spanish artist Pablo Picasso was also using recycled objects in his sculptures. Cardboard, paper, string, twine, and wire were used to make this guitar. This sculpture of a bull's head was constructed from an old bicycle seat and handlebars. In the middle of the 20th century, the Swiss artist Jean Tengli began to construct sculptures from wire and sheet metal that actually moved. Moving sculptures are called kinetic sculptures. I'll attach a link to some videos of his kinetic art so that you can get a feel for what it's like to see his work in person. Tengli used all kinds of discarded materials. Some of his sculptures were even designed to self-destruct. Another example of using junk for art on a large scale is the Cadillac Ranch in Amarillo, Texas. In 1974, this sculpture was created by a group of artists who called themselves the Ant Farm. The sculpture was made with 10 old Cadillac cars, half buried in the ground of a wheat field. Over the years, the cars have been painted many different colors. Today, visitors are encouraged to add their own artistic touches. Finally, we'll look at an artist who is working today with recycled materials. Jean Shin was born in Korea and moved to the United States as a young child. She uses cast off materials to create elegant sculptural installations. An installation is a work of art that has been constructed in a specific space, such as a museum or art gallery. This installation is made from prescription medicine bottles. This one, called Soundwave, is made from melted vinyl records. 
Here's one made from old cell phones and other e-waste. Jean Shin's work is rooted in her immigrant experience. It emphasizes hard work, using materials close at hand, and a celebration of potential. Now that we've gathered all our recycled treasures, we need some tools to hold the pieces of our sculptures together. I have lots of different things here. Several different kinds of tape, scotch tape and colored masking tape. The colored masking tape can be used for decoration as well as for holding things together. I've got a couple of kinds of glue, regular Elmer's glue, and I've also got this tacky glue, which I kind of like when I'm gluing together things that are a little bit heavier. Um, it, the glue is just a little bit thicker and so it's easier to work with. You don't have to have it, but it's nice to have. I have a couple of different kinds of wire. Um, this is wire for the garden, but it's really essentially that same twisty wire that goes at the end of a loaf of bread. So it's really easy to manipulate. And this is some, also some very thin wire that's easy to bend. I've got some beautiful magenta yarn that can be used to tie things together or maybe use as decoration. I have a stapler. I've got scissors. I've got a paintbrush that I may use for some painting on the sculpture, but also I'm going to be using the handle of the paintbrush sometimes as a tool, so I'll show you that later. I could probably make a pretty incredible sculpture just with all these amazing tools that I have right here, but I won't. I'll move these aside and we'll get started on a sculpture with our recycled objects. You can make your sculptures as simple or as complicated as you want to. This one is made simply by sticking straws into a chunk of styrofoam. And the way I've been doing it is just using the end of my paintbrush as a tool. And let me select a spot to put this purple straw in. I think I'll put it on this side because I seem to have purple straws coming out on every other side already. So I'm just going to take my paintbrush and work it into the styrofoam. Make myself a nice hole there. And work my straw into it. What sometimes happens, I've noticed, is some of these straws will start falling out. So what I'm going to do is take some of this tacky glue. Once I've decided where the straws are going to go, just dip that into the glue and work it back into the hole. And once it dries, it should be nice and sturdy. Sometimes you might want to use just a single element in your sculpture, like Jean Shin did in her um, installations, like when she used thousands of medicine bottles or thousands of lottery tickets. I don't have thousands of paper rolls, but I've got a few, so I think I'll stick another one onto here. I'm going to try out a few spots and see what would look best. I don't think I'll put this one here because I've got another one just that exact same height, but I'll run this other side. I think it'll be interesting. So I'm just going to dip that paper roll into my glue, stick it down on the cardboard, and let it dry. Now let's get a little more adventurous. I have this beautiful white cardboard box. It could be used in so many ways. It could simply be the base of a beautiful sculpture. Um, I could poke holes in it and stick things out of it like I did with the straws and the styrofoam. But I think I'm going to do something a little bit different and change the shape of the box by stomping on it. Okay. 
here is my beautiful squashed box. Because remember, there's no rule that says you have to keep items in the same shape that you found them in. You're the artist. If you want to change them, you can. So right away, I am seeing some exciting things going on. I love the way the brown and the white are contrasting one another, whereas before I had just this simple white box. And I'm going to just fool around with this and see what I can do with it. Maybe tear it a little bit and twist it and see what fun shapes and forms I can come up with. As I work on it, I'm going to keep turning it around because remember I want it to look interesting from every single side. Do something like that. Um, maybe I'll take my stapler and try to get some of these things to hold together. make it don't want to get it so squashed that it's not three-dimensional anymore so focus on making it go every which direction that down a little bit later. What I can always do is put some glue on there and then take this little clip and hold it together while that dries. Guess I'll go ahead and do that. strong stuff, so I'm putting pretty much glue on here. Okay. I think I'm just going to rip it all the way through and I can really go wild. tape on this as well to hold this this bit down and I can I can leave the tape or later if I want to glue that instead I can remove the tape and, and glue it I think I'd like to start adding some other objects as well I love this box it's got so much going for it Besides the fact that it opens and closes, it's got all these great holes that maybe we can have some things poking out of. Now, the logical thing to do would be to just line it up like this, but I think that that might be a little bit boring, so I'm going to put it at a diagonal like this, which already I think is much more interesting. I am going to just keep on playing with this for quite some time and we'll see what I come up with. To show you some of the sculptures I've been making, I'm going to invite you outside. I decided to make a sculpture garden in my backyard. So let's go on a tour of my sculpture garden. I was hoping for a sunny and breezy day today and it looks like we got one. I love the way this bubble wrap 
blows in the breeze and the way it catches the sunlight. It even makes some beautiful shadows on the ground. As you can see, I also added some plastic bottles with colorful tape to make it a little more interesting. Here's a little sculpture I made entirely from corrugated cardboard. I love the way it casts shadows on the ground. And the corrugated cardboard has such a wonderful texture. I'm turning it around for you so you can see that I made a big effort to make sure it was interesting looking from every side. Here's that little sculpture made of styrofoam and straws that I showed you earlier. And here is my crushed box sculpture. I had so much fun with this one. I love the way the crushed cardboard is juxtaposed against those straight edges of those other boxes. I also put a little corrugated cardboard along the edge to give it extra texture. Here's the sculpture that I made from paper rolls, and I wanted to place that near these logs because those forms sort of echo the cylindrical shape of the sculpture. Blowing off the stand a little bit, so I'm straightening it up. This one's fun to look at even from the top. And finally, this is my ready-made. I'm trying to emulate Marcel Duchamp here. These are just some old tire cables that have gotten rusty and are ready to be tossed out. But they make a pretty fun little sculpture. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll continue to experiment with making all kinds of sculptures. Maybe you can make your own sculpture garden or create a gallery space inside. Keep up your scavenger hunt for recycled materials because next time we'll be using them for printmaking. Please share photos of your artwork at hashtag goodtimeforart that way we can all learn from one another. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all for today, but remember, it's always a good time for art. Mm -hmm.